Straße gleitet fort und fort, weg von der Tour, wo sie begann, weit über Land, von Ort zu Ort, ich folge ihr, so gut ich kann. Ihr lauf ich raschen Füßes nach, bis sie sich groß und breit verpflicht, mit Weg und Wagnis tausendfach, und wohin dann? Ich weiß es nicht. The road goes ever, ever on, down from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road has gone, and I must follow, if I can, pursuing it with eager feet until it joins some larger way, where many paths and errands meet. And whither then? I cannot say. Die Straße gleitet fort und fort, durch Berg und Schlucht, durch Feld und Tan, bald säumend hier, bald eilend dort, hin zu der Tour, wo sie begann, das Aug, das Feuer sah und schwert, Gefahr und Gruel ohne End. Nun schaut es wieder, heimgekehrt, Baum, Bach und Hügel, die es kennt. The road goes ever, ever on, under cloud and under star, yet feet that wandering have gone turn at last to home afar. Eyes that fire and sword have seen, and horror in the halls of stone, look at last on meadows green and trees and hills they long have known. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kenzie. And I'm Kara. And we're going to be saying welcome in three different languages. So it's going to be Hungarian, uh, German, and Czech. In Hungarian, it's Judovic. Uh, in German, it's Bill Coleman. And in Czech, it's Weich. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> I'm Rochelle. And I'm Haley. On September 1st, 22 students, two leaders, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, a baby, and Janie, aka Gogo, -Go, set off to Europe. Our first stop was Salzburg, where we spent one week, and then we went off to Vienna. Um, <laughs> um, from Vienna, we went. We had free travel. Then we went to Prague. And then from Prague, we went to London, which was our last stop, and now we're back home with all of you. Hello, everybody. I'm Ezriana. And I'm Elena. And uh, we put on a play about cultural integration at a um, place called Brunnen Presage. It is situated in Vienna on a busy street called Brunnen Market. And its goal is to encourage people from different nationalities of all ages and varying socio-cultural backgrounds to engage in community arts projects. They believe art is for everyone. And in order to foster mutual understanding and learning from uh, each other, they offer a wide range of activities for active participants. Uh, their events are open to everyone who's interested, and this is the venue where we performed a couple of skits. And so we'll be showing you some of the scenes that we put on there within our play. This is a day in the life of us during the honeymoon stage. <laughs> Wake up, fucked elf. <laughs> Breakfast, first duke. Church, kirche. Lunch, Mittagessen. This place looks good. What is it? Is that kebab? I think so. Uh, can I have a, a, a 
donor, donor kebab, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm kebab sandwich. Pizza. <laughs> I'm falafel pizza. <laughs> this is really good. Let's eat here every day. Great. <laughs> Boat ride on the Danube. Boats fought off the Danau. Dinner, Abendessen. Playing cards, Kartenspielen. Oh, <laughs> Go to bed, schlafen. My name is Mate, and today I'm going to be reciting a poem that I wrote while we were staying in Salzburg. Throughout the entire cross-cultural, Justin had us do artistic responses of everywhere that we went and from multiple locations and places that we went. And so I wrote this poem while sitting in a cafe and just observing life just to kind of give you guys a perspective. It is called Centro. Caprichosa, stretcha moya, peppermint tea. Tastes of home, tastes of nostalgia all presented before me. Going home, going to work, passers pass me by. I wonder if they really see the beauty I see before my own eyes. Couples, families, lone wolves walking, eye contact, holding hands, and other forms of talking. As they pass, I look at them and we exchange smiles. Little do they know that they are helping me mentally move miles. Unaware, without a care, their presence seems to me Another day in this nation of cultural identity. International, oh so fashionable, it all seems so right. The best identity within any entity is to simply live the way you like. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Michael. I'm Will. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about our time in Vienna. Um, so we went to Vienna after Salzburg. Uh, we spent a bulk of our trip there, it was approximately eight weeks. Uh, the city of Vienna is the capital of Austria. It's located uh, on the eastern side of the country, on the Danube River. Uh, the population is approximately 1.7 million people. And it was known as the musical, intellectual, and cultural capital of the world during much of the 19th and 20th century. Uh, it was home to such people as Mozart, Beethoven, Freud, and Gustav Klimt. Uh, over the course of our stay in Vienna, we all stayed with host families. Uh, I stayed with Mate in Vienna's second district. We all had varying degrees of freedom in these situations. Uh, I lived in an, an apartment owned by my host mother, while the rest of our host family lived down the street. So outside of weekly host dinners, we were essentially left to do whatever we wanted. Uh, so my situation was a little bit different. Um, there were four of us living uh, in the 13th district uh, with a single divorced mother. 
Um, we had a very nice house, and we lived in a very nice neighborhood, and we had the basement all to ourselves, similar to Mate and Will's apartment style. Uh, but we were still living under her roof, and therefore under her rules, um, which were sometimes very unusual and inconvenient and a little bit frustrating. Uh, so our typical morning routine went a little something like this. Uh, if we had class at 9, that was an hour away, so we had to wake up at 7.30. We got out of bed, immediately folded our bed sheets to the bottom of our bed to let it air out. We opened up two windows down in our basement. Uh, then we went and took quick showers. Uh, usually two of us showered in the morning and two of us in the evening. Um, after we showered, we were to squeegee the walls and the floor. Um, after that, we got dressed and we were not to leave any dirty clothes anywhere other than in the hamper. Um, then we had a quick breakfast, usually like an apple or something on the go and we would grab our coat and head out the door before remembering that we weren't wearing any shoes. So we would go all the way back downstairs where we were supposed to store our shoes, grab them, and we couldn't wear them in the house, so we'd carry them back up to the top of the steps to the door, and we put our coat back on, and then we would grab our keys, start to unlock the door, and then remember, oh wait, we forgot to close the windows. So then we ran back downstairs after looking at our watch and seeing that we had three minutes before our bus came and realized halfway down that we were wearing our shoes in the house. So we would take off our shoes there on the stairwell, carry them back down, close the windows, run back upstairs, lace them again, and as we were in the middle of lacing them, someone would say, wait, did you remember to turn off the power strips? At which point we would say, no. No, we did not remember to do that. So we'd take our shoes back off, run back downstairs, turn off the power strips, come back, unlock the door, go outside, see our bus driving away, come back inside, wait, try 10 minutes later, and finally get on our bus and enjoy the rest of our day. Before coming back home and finding out that Caleb forgot to turn the heater off. <laughs> and so you would think we would get better at this as time went on, but Unfortunately, we did not. Uh, the story actually happened within the last two weeks of the trip. <laughs> so. uh, while we stayed in Vienna, we all took German classes from Monday through Thursday from 9 to 12. It was a lot of German. And uh, there were two different classes. Uh, some of us had class with Elizabeth, and some of us had class with Johannes. And while we tried to learn German, we also went to the Cafe Connection once a week. Uh, where we tried to help refugees learn English. Some of us went on Tuesdays and we would help with uh, conversations and phrasing and then others went on Wednesdays and they tutored them in grammar. Hello, my name is Kaylin Abrahams. I'm going to read a poem that I wrote as part of our Brunin Passage play, and it is about the second stage of cultural adaptation, which is culture shock. Culture shock, where all the new stops, rockets to strange and crude, to foreign and rude. We long for faces we know, for embraces that feel like things that are real, we stumble through our days like monkeys in a cage, like monks denied heat, numb to everything, dumb to the beauty of the language spoken all around us. We try to drown out our exclusion with social media's home-like illusion. We feel bounced and rocked from street to street, pushed and shoved by every Viennese we meet. Our fellow Americans become our only retreat from smoke Ubans and concrete.
Uh, hi, I'm Sarah. Um, while we were in Vienna, Rochelle and I lived with a couple in their 70s on um, the busiest or the, the biggest shopping street um, right in the middle of the city. Um, and the couple was very sweet, and although they spoke little English, every interaction with them was positive. However, we didn't see we didn't see very much of them throughout the eight weeks that we were staying there. The people we act interacted with more in the house were their housekeepers and the nurses that were there to help take care of um, Mrs. Garsuli um, because she had Parkinson's disease. Um, the nurses set out our breakfast every morning, did our laundry, and took care of us when we were sick. And the housekeepers showed up at random times throughout the week to clean our bedrooms and other such things. One of my favorite interactions was one time, um, as soon as I woke up, I came out to go get breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning and opened my door and one of the, the housekeepers was standing out there with a vacuum and she greeted me in her own language and then just started talking really quick in German and what I got from it was that she heard that I talked German, spoke German, and she thought it would be cool if I knew all the languages that she knew, which was like five or more. <laughs> so so um, she's telling me this in German, and, and all of a sudden she just starts saying, Dubra Jutra, and pausing in between each time she said it, until I finally realized that she wanted me to repeat after her. So I said, Dubra Jutra, and she was like, Guta Dubra, Morgen Jutra, Guta Morgen Dubra Jutra. So she taught me how to say good morning. And then she laughed, said goot, 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 and walked away. And I never figured out which language she was t teaching me. <laughs> I'm Jeremiah, and I'm going to talk a little bit about a religious aspect of our trip. And I'm going to give you a little bit of my personal experiences. All of us come from different religious backgrounds, a special thing about EMU. And so, I have had trouble with my faith before this trip, and going on this trip allowed me to experience a lot of different churches, see a lot of different splendor of the whole world that Christianity has enveloped and other religions as well, including the Jewish faith. And after this trip, I can definitely say that I have come from a place of questioning my faith to being able to say I'm very solid in my faith and nobody has the power to take that away from me. Hi, I'm Esther. Just gonna, just a little bit. <laughs> I'm Ate again. I'm Corey. I'm Caleb. Uh, and when we were in London, we saw a lot of plays and we got to see No Man's Land, which happened to have Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart in it. Um, so after the show, we stayed outside in the cold for a couple hours so we could see them. Uh, we almost gave up hope, but then Ian McKellen came out and we were all like, ooh, and he was a really nice guy. Um, <laughs> and then he like realized we were Americans and he was like, I'm going to entrust America to you. <laughs> and he was like, we're worried about that Pence fellow. And you know, I don't want to like read between the lines or anything, but I mean, it kind of sounds like he's saying to take out Pence, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I, I, you know, like Gandalf, when like he was talking to Frodo or something like that, Frodo wasn't sure or something like that, but you know, I believe. <laughs> and that was a great experience we had in London. EMU does not condone murder. <laughs> I'm Thane. And I'm Caleb. That's a good idea. Yeah. And we're going to do some cross-cultural stats, because everyone loves that. All right. The number of churches we visited, 24. Number of plays seen, 35. Uh, number of theaters visited, 38. Number of times Sound of Music was referenced. <laughs> Talking about it contributes to the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Could 
Currencies used, euros, Czech crowns, Hungarian forints, Swiss francs, British pounds, which conveniently converted really well to US dollars right now because of Brexit. Brexit. <laughs> Accumulative countries we visited, Austria, Vatican City, Slovakia, Czech Republic, France, Hungary, the UK, Ireland, Holland, Bosnia, Herzegovina, is that, Mate, yeah. is that right? Cool. Italy, <laughs> Switzerland, and Turkey for a few minutes in the airport. Scarves bought, 45. <laughs> Reading packet weight, four pounds. Number of beers bought. None, this uh, is an EMU sanctioned event and we signed an agreement, <laughs> shut up, dude. <laughs> Uh, number of steps, average number of steps taken per person, approximately 3,030,220. Number of people left behind, three. <laughs> we found them. N number of times locals asked us about Trump, too many. Too many. Number of hot, fresh, sexy European haircuts, zero. <laughs> Colton. <laughs> Number of kids in the group, three. Number of meltdowns, 24, and the kids had a rough time too. <laughs> Number of pictures taken, thousands. Number of selfies taken, at least a thousand. Number of pictures of people taking selfies, 12. Number of selfies with people taking pictures of people taking selfies in the background of said initial selfie, one. Number <laughs> Number of times Jerry Holsoppel died inside. Once, just now, probably. <laughs> and finally, the analysis of broken luggage. We have two lost suitcase wheels, gaping holes in at least two backpacks, two broken handles, a suitcase, and a suitcase gleefully thrown down a flight of stairs because in Will's word, he was trying to rage against the machines. <laughs> the machines being the suitcase, I assume. Now I'd like to call Justin and his whole family up here. That includes you, Jamie. <laughs> Come on, Vienna. Come on. <laughs> um, we would all like to say thank you to Justin and his entire family for going through this great experience with us and making it possible for all of us to be able to do this. And so we have gifts for you, and that includes you guys too. At this time, if Matthew Huntsberger would begin the slideshow. Uh, this was our theme song that is playing in the background for approximately the first two months of our trip. Uh, it's really bad, but really great at the same time.
All right, I believe that's the end of the slideshow. So, uh, thank you all for coming. Thanks for your prayers and support uh, over our trip. Um, we're all still processing, so if you ask us, how was your trip? We're probably going to look at you and be like, you know, I don't know. I'll tell you in 10 years. Um, so yeah, thanks for coming, and uh, good luck with finals. We're just going to annoy you while you try to study, because um, we have nothing left to do. So thank you. And uh, we also have a uh, hashtag adieu if you didn't follow that on Instagram. And there's a blog if you go on EMU's cross-cultural thing if you want more stories from our trip.